So you've got your iPad, the first thing you need to do is put your SIM card in. It will take a few minutes for that to activate, but hopefully after five to ten minutes you will see the EE symbol in the top left hand corner of your screen and hopefully either a 3G or 4G symbol next to it. To make sure that the SIM card is working correctly, just go back into your settings and in the cellular data section check that all three of the top tabs are switched on. And then if you scroll down you'll see a selection of apps on the iPad including the Digero app which you won't see at this stage because you haven't downloaded it yet. But what I've done here is just enabled the apps only that I want to use the data connection so not to waste any of that precious data. So when you get your iPad and open it up you'll see you've got the usual apps like settings uh, but you've also got something called speed test which is a really good tool for testing internet speeds upload and download speeds where you are on location so this can be really handy when you are outside a counting office or whatever whether you're on 4G 3G or local Wi-Fi you can get a really good idea of what your upload and download speeds are now as you can see here this download speed is far too quick uh, you'd be doing very well to get this on 4G but um, but this has been done in the office, hence why you've got faster speeds. But this is a really useful tool for establishing what kind of connection you've got to work with. The App Store is another app that comes standard on iOS 7, and in a while you'll use this to download the Digero Live app, but we'll get onto that more later. So the kit, starting with an iPad mini, a box of accessories for the iPad, a camera tripod, a Bluetooth headset which we'll use to capture the audio and finally two AA power supplies which we can use to add extra power to the iPad and the Bluetooth headset. So starting with the iPad, it's a standard 16 gig iPad mini with a power supply and cable. Switch it on, uh, have to add a four digit pin like most iPads and iPhones. Uh, in this case it is four zeros. Uh, opens up to a standard iOS 7 interface and uh, all the standard apps that you would expect to see. Nothing extra except for the Digero Live app which we will load on now. So first of all you open up your settings and you need to set up an iTunes account to the iPad. So hopefully you have an iTunes account and I just want you to put your details in uh, and then set it all up. Once that's set up, you go to the App Store and you search for an app called the Tajero Live Mobile App. There it is. Uh, in my case, I just had to download it, but you would buy this. It costs, I think, a few pounds, uh, not too much. And then um, we open it up. Now, the main cost of this app to use is the license, which we are providing. So at this stage, you have to put in a username and password. I will email you these details, but on the back of your iPad, you will also see a label outlining these numbers and digits. So the app will launch, but first it will ask you if you need a microphone. You hit OK, and this will allow the Bluetooth headset to work. When it launches, it just shows you the video screen, you can move it around, but I'll get on to later about how you actually use this app. So, uh, once you have downloaded it, you just need to do a couple more things before we can start using it. First of all, just drag it down into your lower section of your screen so it's just on your home page and it's easy to find. I then want you to go back into the settings, first of all into the privacy settings, Select the microphone button and just check that the Digero Live Plus microphone is enabled. Then go down to the bottom of the screen and you'll see the Digero Live settings where you need to change the camera standard from NTSC to PAL. Otherwise it will not work. Uh, enable the HD video and make sure that the Allow Bluetooth button is selected. This will make the Bluetooth headset work for your audio source. This Bluetooth headset you'll find in the kit the one here isn't exactly a replica of the one you will use, but I used it as a prop. It's very simple. It clips on your ear, like to make phone calls and things. To pair it with your iPad, the first thing you need to do is put it into discoverable mode. So you hold this button down, and then a red and white light will flash on the side. 
Then go into the settings tab again on your iPad and look on Bluetooth and you will see it searching for devices. Sooner or later it will see the device uh, titled either M55 or in one case an M25 device. Once it sees that you select it and the device will pair with the iPad. So once that's ready to go you go back to your home page and you launch your Dejero Live app icon and it will go straight in and you will see a video picture coming from your camera. The first thing you need to do is change the delay to 8 seconds in the bottom left hand corner uh, and then when you're ready you just hit the start button in the top left hand corner. Initially uh, the iPad does a few tests just to establish the connection to where it's sending the pictures and checks for speeds and things like that over internet and Wi-Fi uh, and then once it's on air it says on air and that should now be working. Pictures will stream to the cloud server, the details are written on the bottom of the screen and when you're ready to cut the transmission you touch the on air button again and it will ask you if you want to and you say yes and that is the end of the transmission. So other bits of kit, you've got a box with a few accessories that help transform the iPad into a video camera. The first item is a bracket which the iPad can sit in. This can connect to the top of a tripod through the base plate through this thread here. You simply screw the base plate on and then it can sit nicely on top of the iPad. The second thing in the box is a case which the iPad needs to sit in. Just like any other iPad case, it's very straightforward. You just take the iPad, clip it into the edge and just push it down around the edges so that it's sitting nice and snug. So the base plate, attaching this to the bracket I mentioned earlier, it's very straightforward. You need to just line the thread and the screw up and when you feel like it's lined up properly, you just gently turn the bottom screw and thread it into the base of the bracket. Don't do this too tightly or quickly, just nice and slowly. You don't want to break it. Once it's sitting nicely, you just, just check that it feels okay and then when you're ready, you just place the iPad, make sure you do it the correct way around uh, and it will just sit on top just like that. The last thing to remember is that the camera goes on the top and not on the bottom. So to extend the tripod you release these legs tighten them up and spread the tripod then adjust using various screws you adjust the tripod and then pull this trigger back and let the iPad sit nicely and that is that. To adjust the uh, tripod you have different controls. You have this one here which tilts, not particularly useful, probably just have that flat and tight. You have this one here, turns and allows you to tilt and pat, tilt forward and back. And finally you have this one on the side which allows you to pan. You can use the spirit level ball to make it level but you have to use the actual tripod legs and to do this. There is, no, there is no ability to level a tripod underneath.